Oh, sure, I would love these 60 magic cards. Look at the Black Lotus, the Moxes, Time Spiral, Time Twister. These are real magic cards. Oh. Oh, they're fake proxies? Oh, that's okay. Well, as long as they're cheap. They're how much? A thousand dollars for 60 fake magic cards! Time to stop giving Wizards of the Coast money. I played Magic the Gathering for nearly 30 years now, and my best friend, some of my girlfriends, some of my closest friends, I met during a game of Magic the Gathering. I've traveled the country to play this game. I've owned small game stores. I've judged for Magic the Gathering, and I've talked about it relentlessly on my YouTube channel. So I do not have to hold this opinion lightly. This is a tough decision for me to make. In the past, there's been a few times where I thought magic was dying. The Mirrodin cycle was a good example. The Urza cycle was another example. Kamigaya. I mean, there's been times that magic has had some lulls where the game just wasn't that fun. Not a lot of people were playing. But today in 2022, we're seeing the opposite problem of that. Magic is currently more popular than it's ever been, and it's making Hasbro more money than the game has ever made. But the way they are doing that is by squeezing every penny out of its players to the point that even I have fatigue. I can't keep up with the products that are coming out. Back in the day, when I first started playing Magic, there was four, maybe six sets released per year. But if you look at this chart that's on the screen right now, you will see in 2022, there has been more products released in the last year than there were for like the first 10 years of the game's life combined. Who can keep up with that? And a lot of these new products aren't even Magic related. I mean, they are functional in the game, but you know, there's Walking Dead cards. There's Transformers cards. There's Stranger Things cards. And since this is a competitive game, if you want to stay competitive, if you want to be at the top of your game, you've got to buy these cards and play with these cards even if you don't like them. That's kind of how a competitive card game works. Another way to look at it is the number of cards, unique cards that are getting printed per year. Back in 93, there was barely 500 cards printed that year. In 2022, there's been almost 2,000 unique cards that you have to collect and get, and then variations of those cards as well. So I, nobody, nobody can keep up. But players like me kept playing and players like me kept buying because we wanted to keep playing this game and loving it. Until today. Today marks the day that Wizards of the Coast officially destroyed what little goodwill it had left with its player base. Today marks the 30th anniversary of Magic the Gathering, and to mark that occasion, they released the Magic the Gathering 30th Anniversary Edition, which is a reprinting of most of the cards from the Alpha set, with one major problem. These are not real cards. You can't play with them in tournaments. You can't shuffle them up. They have a different back. They are not tournament legal. And on top of that, for a box of four boosters, they charged $1,000. This box of Magic the Gathering cards, 36 total packs, 15 cards per pack, originally retailed for about $110, though I only paid about 95 bucks. So you could buy 10 of these boxes of actual playable cards for what you're paying for 60 proxy cards. In these anniversary boosters, there is a chance you will open some of the most expensive cards in the game, an updated version with the original art, but the problem is the backs on these cards are different, meaning they are not official magic cards. You could easily just print out your own cards with no magic backs. You could buy proxies from somebody on Etsy, and they are just as real as the magic cards they are selling you for a thousand dollars. They can be used in exactly the same places. So if you have a printer, instead of spending a thousand dollars for a chance of one of these cards, you can spend 15 cents and get the exact card you want. And the good news is the Magic the Gathering community rejected this product almost completely outright. And I'm gonna show you some examples of that, but it makes sense, right? I don't have a problem with proxies. You can shuffle them up at my table. I'll play with you if you're playing with proxies. But why are you charging $250 for 15 fake magic cards? $1,000 for 60. 
that's not okay. Had this product been 20 bucks for four packs so that me and my friends could get together and draft Alpha for the first time in 30 years, I would have loved this product. But this price for non-Magic cards, hell, even if they were real Magic cards, is kind of crazy. And it's real money grabby. And you know the cost of production on a product like this is probably 10 bucks. So they're making 900 plus dollars per sale. That is, that's price gouging to the nth degree. And it's, it's not okay. Magic community creators rejected this product. They refused to talk about it positively. They refused to take endorsement deals. They refused to receive free product because they did not want people spending their money on fake cards. And I'm so proud of this community for making that choice, for trying to shut this product down. So Wizards of the Coast decided to get really underhanded here. Hasbro, realizing they couldn't get Magic players to work with them, reached out to Yu-Gi-Oh players who create content, Pokemon players who created content, and offered them free product as well as money to get them to shill what is effectively a scam by the main company to try to convince those people to sell their collectors and their players and their watchers fake magic cards for a thousand dollars and some people unfortunately took that money but you know as toxic and as awful as that strategy was as toxic and as awful as this product was it was successful they sold it out in a matter of minutes collectors bought it up without thinking hopefully but maybe as an investment maybe i i genuinely don't know why they would but this is the state of the game now and because this sold out guarantee you magic the gathering will continue to fleece its customers as hard and as fast as it can so as it is right now i don't recommend you buy new magic products because i think it's all going to be mostly worthless one day i think the game is in a very bad way and I think if you invest in brand new cards now, you're going to be losing that entire investment in just a few years. So I don't recommend you spend money on new Magic product, and I don't plan to either. If a new set comes out, I'll print off the cards I want. But don't get me wrong, I'm not going to stop playing Magic the Gathering. I have 29 years worth of cards in my collection that I can buy and trade and sell, and along with new cards that I can print off, I can play whatever decks I want. And I'm just not going to buy a new product. And I don't recommend you buy that new product either because I think they're driving the game into the ground and I think eventually those products are going to be worthless. In fact, I'm going to continue to sell off as many of my old Magic cards as I can and in the cases they are extremely rare, I'll just print off a copy. If Wizards of the Coast is printing off proxies and allowing me to use them, then I guess I can print off my own and I'm absolutely going to. I'm not going to be shoving up those Gaia's Cradles anytime soon, boys. If you still have a budget that you want to spend on Magic the Gathering cards and you like supporting small artists, you could buy your proxies from Etsy. There's a lot of content creators out there making really cool proxies that you could use for your decks or for your cubes. And I think they look a hell of a lot better than this Magic 30th Anniversary Edition. And I think a lot of these proxies are going to turn out to be pretty rare because Wizards of the Coast is going to start shutting these people down sooner rather than later. And if you want to still collect real Magic cards, the real thing... Go to your local gaming store. They will probably be selling singles that you want and you need. You'll be supporting a small business and not supporting the big business that's trying to fleece you out of every dime you have. Keep your local stores open. They're the place you play at. They should be the place you shop at as well. I hope that you'll buy their singles. I hope you go there and play in their tournaments and you'll give them money to do so. But don't be giving that money to Wizards of the Coast. They've absolutely proven they don't deserve it. And you don't just have to take my word for this. Their stock prices definitely reflect this issue. And in fact, Wall Street Journal has gone from calling Hasbro a buy product to a sell product. So expect the stock price to get lower and lower as they continue in this direction. They've traded short-term games for long-term love of the product, and it's killing the game. So it's with a heavy heart. I recommend you stop spending money on Magic the Gathering for now. Buy singles from somebody you love. Trade print, do whatever it is you want to do. Play the game. Absolutely play the game. Just stop giving Wizards of the Coast your money because they are absolutely not earning it right now. And this has nothing to do with anybody that works at the company. The people that are working at the company work really hard and they make a really great game. It's just their bosses have them working too damn hard and they are making far too much game and they are charging far too much for the products. I wish they'd give you guys a break. Hell, I wish they'd give my wallet a break. 
so I didn't have to make this decision and recommend other people do the same thing. But until next time, guys, shuffle up your cards and have fun. Play however you want to play. Just be careful with your money. As always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again soon.